You know, I'm, I'm in my business, I'm used to following some tough acts. But uh, the bar tonight has really been raised. It is uh, such a privilege to be a part of this group, and I thank you. And I am um, so touched and moved by this video that we just saw. Um, you know, as we, as we say in the movie business, I can't wait to see the sequel. <laughs> I, have, I have been introduced many times on many occasions, but... Uh, but that truly was extraordinary, as, as LBJ himself would have said of such a generous introduction, my daddy would have loved it and my mama would have believed it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alas, if only my, my mother and my father could be here tonight. The only shadow on an otherwise brilliant occasion. My father, as you saw, Bob Shankin, especially, would have loved this. Brooklyn born, son of Dutch Jewish immigrants. He loved Texas and the university with a kind of fervor that only a refugee's son can feel. I do have some family here tonight, Phyllis Shankin, Francis Shankin, and two of my brothers, Pete and Dirk, both of whom went to the University of Texas as well. The, uh, the third brother, the black sheep of the family, he, it's a sad story, he, uh, he settled for Yale <laughs> and the Stanford Business School. And I don't want you to feel too sorry for him. As we say back on the ranch, um, the boy did all right, considering he didn't have much of an education. <laughs> My beautiful partner, Deborah McDermott, the Greek goddess, is here. And my daughter, Sarah, and my son, Joshua, are also here. And as always, their presence fills me with joy. You know, sometimes a man achieves by hard work, and sometimes, you know, you just get lucky. And in that regard, I am very lucky. So thank you, Dell Williams, President FinFest, distinguished guests, my fellow honorees, family and friends. I am so deeply honored by this recognition and it, it is fair to say that I virtually grew up on the 40 acres. Um, as a child, I saw my first play here, uh, would audition for the first time and be rejected for the first time. <laughs> act in my first production and finally, thankfully, receive the education and the training that would lead to a long, varied, and successful career in the arts. As you heard, I, I am a storyteller. That's really what I am, and I, I would like to share one very brief story with you tonight, which is the greatest lesson I learned at the University of Texas, the one which has stood me in good stead both in the arts and in my life. Um, I arrived at UT in 1971, a true freshman, with boundless ambition and uh, possibly a somewhat exaggerated opinion of my talents, <laughs> UT would soon put me to rights. My challenge as an actor was, you see, I could so clearly see in my mind's eye every detail of the performance I wanted to give, every move, every gesture, every word, nuance, that the effort to realize my vision would inevitably create a certain rigidity, <laughs> which would drive my acting teacher crazy. Her name was Yaginka Zich, and she was a graduate of the famous Warsaw Conservatory, a classmate of Grotowski, who would transform international theater for a generation. And how Yaga wound up in Texas in 1971 is beyond me. But like so many UT professors, she was a godsend. I'm, I'm pretty sure Yaga didn't feel about me that way, at least right at the beginning. In fact, Yaga was increasingly frustrated with me, so much so that finally, on one memorable day in the middle of my classroom acting scene, seeing she leapt to her feet, literally pulling her hair, and shouted at me across the room, Robert, Robert, you must leave something for God. <laughs> I 
and there it was. <laughs> this idea that you couldn't possibly control everything and had to, in some profound way, surrender to the moment, thus allowing for the possibility of genuine inspiration, changed everything for me as an artist and as a man. For we all struggle with this stubborn impulse, don't we? How hard it is to relinquish what we so strongly feel should have been or what ought to be for the unalloyed pleasure of discovering what heretofore was unimaginable. Eventually, as you saw, I moved from performer to writer, but the lesson still held. And this kind of experience now, the discovery in the moment of creation of something unexpected, is one of my greatest pleasures. The lesson has also proven invaluable in a life which has taken some wildly unpredictable turns, among them, most happily, my presence here tonight. I thank you very much.